What's going on guys, Sam here from Build Not Bought and today is the long awaited episode. We are finally putting a new tray on this thing. All right, ladies, just before we get onto this episode, a couple of bits of information and one massive giveaway happening. Number one, you guys have been asking for the hoodies. They are finally back in stock. So the hoodies have been restocked in time for winter. If you want to grab one, there'll be a link down below to the website. Number two, we got Show Your Dirt happening. It was delayed once, it was delayed twice, but we've moved the venue to a place that will actually hold it. And it's happening on the 22nd of May. So that's in a couple of weeks down at QSEC in Caboolture. So if you're in Queensland, you want to come display your rig next to some of the biggest baddest rigs in Queensland definitely hit up that event there's a link down below to the Facebook page you can pre-enter uh, if it's within this week to save a few bucks but otherwise you can just enter your car on the day there'll be heaps of cars there it's for you guys definitely go down and check that out it is my own event I've been running all over the state and I'm super stoked to have it for the first time here in Queensland number three the giveaway we're gonna do a massive giveaway with fuel off road so in this video all you do is comment down below what four-wheel drive you have and you go in the running to go in the draw to win a full set of wheels from Fuel Off Road. So, all my cars run these, they do proper bead locks, they do all the latest and greatest alloys, even the big dog 40s that you can get over in the US. So, let us know in the comments below what you drive, and I'll be picking a winner at random in the next Built Not Bought episode. Anyway, let's move on with this week's episode. Let's get into it. All right, that's all right, guys. We're down at Patriot Canvas. Now, this is a very special episode because as far as I know, this is one of the first times cameras have been let behind the doors of Patriot Campers off-road. So, we got my safety boots on. Before we get going into putting this tray on, I'll give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek at how the these things are get manufactured. How will they with these things? I left I that one word. I want to take you guys behind the doors and run through a little bit of the production line, get a sneak peek at how these things go together. All right, so like all great creations, you gotta start with a good design. So we're gonna go see Harrison, check out this tray. Alrighty, I'll tell you what, it's looking pretty damn special. This stuff's super flash. It's a bit different to what I do when I get a bit of metal and a stick and a bit of pencil and try and make something up. All this CAD stuff, you can really design it, make sure it fits before you get hands-on tools, basically. So, let's head into the factory and start hooking in this thing. Right, oh, we're here down with Brendan. We're hooking into the first bits of the tray. So, we've just come from Harrison. We had a look at the design. So, the next thing is to start folding this up. All right, mate, so I'll wait. give you a quick rundown. Yep. So, this machine's fully automated, the CNC process. As you can see, it actually shows us where to put the parting to the machine. Yep. And as you click through, it shows us how we're going to actually fold it. So it's quite simple. Yeah, right. So all we do is follow the pictures. So it's all electronic now. It's none of this hand brake press stuff. No, none of that Straight stuff. Straight into Those it. days are over. Yep. Fully engineered, fully processed, tells us everything we need to know. Yep. Even how to put it in the machine. Yep. So I'm going to throw you in the deep end, mate. Cool. Let's see how you go. Oh man, better not mess it up. That's <laughs> all right. So, see what we're going to do here. We've got these lines here and here. Yep. So we're gonna put that in the press. All right, mate. That. Push that pedal all the way, keep it down, all the way up. That's it, done. Look at that. You did your first fold. Man, normally I'm sitting there with a hammer and dolly. Like. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> so we've got one more fold to go, fold three. Yep. And we flip that over Face like it so. Down. Oh, it's good, it's got all the pictures and everything. Got all the pictures in there like that. next step would be tacking it up, getting it tacking welded. Tacking it up, welding it up, mate. All right, let's go have a look at that. All right, let's have a look. All right, what is going on? We've got Brendan here. Now we're into the real man stuff, welding. I'm excited about this sort of stuff, but it's a little bit different for me because it's aluminium welding. Now, I did buy myself a TIG not long ago, but I haven't oh, yeah. learned how to alley weld. So, I think I'm gonna need a little run through before I get hooked into this stuff. Yeah, so, sweet. run us through the gear and basically how alley is different to normal MIG welding. Yeah, so we use the Fronius uh, Pulse MIG welders here. They're really good, you can adjust all the settings yep. and yeah, get real nice welds from them. All right, so what sort of angle in that? Like how should I hold the gun? Give us a bit of an example without actually yeah, welding. You, sort of, you push or pull? Yeah, you want to push, you want to have sort of a 45 angle yep. and then 
Yeah, you can either step it, like, or just move it slowly. So if you just keep a pulse. consistent speed, the pulsing will drop yeah, as hard as you need. Yeah, it'll do sort of yeah, the yeah. work for you. All right, I'll give it a shot then. I like this. Uh, it says scrap. <laughs> That's what I need. Brendan was saying basically the way this trigger's set up, you, you don't hold it down. It was just a press. Yeah, if you tap pulses, that, yeah, yeah, I mean, let go, it'll continue. That's going to be well, the only yeah. weird thing for me, but yeah. we'll give it a shot. Sweet. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you do one. If it looks the same, yeah, then I yeah, think I'll pass the test. Pretty similar. I think I was slow, going a bit yeah. slow, is that why it's built up a bit more? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So this is the real deal now, we're getting into it. Um, Brendan's already tacked this up. Obviously we did a bit of bending before on one of the parts here, so now it's the full welding stage. I have a crack at this, but ultimately I'll let Brendan do the <laughs> finishing job on it. But we'll hook into a few little bits and see how we go. Alrighty, so we're into the powder coating stage now. I've just got given a bit of a run through here. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get hands on with all of this. There's a few other bits and pieces in here off other trays, but essentially this is some of the side rails. We've got headboards in here. Now with powder coating, I'll try and say as it goes, basically like, it, it's just powder. So it's like a liquefied, um, there's a little hopper which liquefies the powder. And, and this, these bits of metal are actually earth and there's a charge coming out of the gun here. So because of the, the bits of atoms are charged, the powder wants to stick to the metal. So he said, you first you want to run through all your corners. And even by doing this, the wrap around on the sides, you'll see the powder actually wraps around and sticks to the back as well. So it's pretty flash stuff. It actually goes on and it doesn't look like paint until it goes through the baking stage. So that happens next. It goes through a big oven and gets baked on. And that's when you get that nice clear finish and it'll look like a paint job. Alrighty, so we've got some parts coming out of the oven here. Now this isn't the stuff that was specifically coated, but for the purpose of the exercise, um, it's basically a big old oven like you got at home. It's about 200, 240 degrees? 210 degrees, 12 minutes, um, and it basically bakes that powder on, and this is when you start getting that finishing look. Is it the last stage? Pretty much, yeah, and then it just dries. And that's it, done. That easy. Try and scratch that in the bush. <laughs> Oh, we're rolling. <laughs> we're here in the pre-assembly area. I'm just, sorry, I'm getting blown away by all of this because everything has been thought of with these. Like, I'm like, oh, do we get the drill and put, no, the drill, holes are done. We've got glands to go in, every prop rivet hole is pre-done, and they do that because once it's powder coated, you don't want to have any parts that have no paint on them. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of a bit stunned at the moment at how well these things are put together. But anyway, we've got some pre-assembly. This is where we start putting in lights, wiring harnesses, getting glands in. There's some rivets for some internal bracing, stuff like that. So. We're getting super close now to actually putting the tray together, box out, ready to go on the car. So um, yeah, let's look into some of this stuff. Yeah, sounds good. Sweet. Now you want to go up to a very um, specific torque of about four agaduggers, so about about there. Whipping the crack, cracking the whip, whipping the crack, cracking the whip. All right. We're here, we're in the fitting bay now. Um, we've obviously gone through and seen a lot of this stuff come together. Here's the exciting bit. We've already got the bits and pieces laid out. Big jigsaw puzzle, so we'll get ripping into putting it together. Obviously the tray is the main thing. We'll get that up on a bench. Um, and you basically put the tray on the car. Uh, hang on. What? The? I've just seen, what, what is going on here? Hang on a second. They said they were gonna do something special. I didn't mean bought, not built. Justin? Oh man, is this your idea? I had nothing to do with it. Oh, hang on. Oh, you stitched me up here. There we go, built not bought. 
Okay, look, I didn't build this whole thing, but I got, I did some welding, you saw that. I did some welding, I did some powder coating, did as much as I could, and now we're gonna put it on the car. It should be called Bought and Installed. put diesel in there while he's not looking. Oh man, it's like heavier oh, than lighter with this than you. Oh my God, it's gotta go up. That's my exhaust pad. Is anyone spotting? <laughs> They're down. Look at that. Whoa. I think we've landed. The eagle has, the exhaust pipe fits. There we go, we've got the tray on the car. Step one done. That already looks badass. We're pretty much finished, I think. Yeah, we're, right. we, we, we're gonna go, yeah, that's, we're done. We're out of here. <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> so do we, should we like bolt it down now? Yeah, and then we'll, you just, just... Um, we'll loosely fit all the bolts. <laughs> yep. See, I'm just following uh, Michael's instructions here because he, he is the world record holder for installing a P-Core tray. So he tells me. Three metre flatty world record holder. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Peak or holder? Self appointed. <laughs> Alrighty, so now the tray is on, the boys are just going to work out the spaces to get the thing setting level. I'm going to hook into all the electrical, so obviously we've got to marry up um, the plugs from the tray onto the um, patrol harness. So everything's Deutsch plugged on the tray side, so I'm just going to make sure I confirm the colours. Um, of the cables and then solder all these joints together. And then it's basically a plug and play kit. All the Deutsch plugs are super waterproof. I recommend using these anyway. So we'll get them sorted out. Same with the other side and that bit will be done. I only just make it look like I know what I'm doing and then I'll step out of the camera for a minute and let them fix it. Yeah, what's your world record, world record holder? All right, but we're talking about one side here. I'm gonna do it, all right, let's do another competition. I did this in my last episode, well not last episode, I don't know when you're watching this, but a few ago and I got a bit bored about, hang on, Justin's messaged me. <laughs> I was just about to say this to you, so with the cameras in here, Justin's, I was about to say, oh, he's probably watching us on the cameras. And he did, he took a screenshot of the workshop and we're all just look, <laughs> looking at it and he goes, if you keep looking at it, it will install itself. And here's us, <laughs> all our arms across, just staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, back to what we were doing. So a couple of episodes ago, I got real bored putting the rear end in my 80 series. So I did a bit of a time challenge. Now I'm gonna do another one, a little prediction. So we're gonna put front toolbox on, rear toolbox, side guards, are there separate pieces that go on the yeah, yeah. yeah. So the three piece guard, I'm gonna say half an hour. Oh he's going, he's, he's going, going strong. strong. This is start. so doing it properly, so sicker flexing all the sicker bolts. Sicker flex the bolts, torque them all up. All the bolts done properly, all the central locking works, good to go. You might have to give and I'm not gonna be like racing, I'm not gonna be like, oh I'm just gonna like put it together. Half an hour. Yeah, just do it. Just do it. That's it. Uh, I do want a little little rattle gun though. No, Alan keys only. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. I gotta find the sicker. I gotta find a rattle gun. I want a big rattle gun. All right, let's do it all by hand, bugger. Oh, Oh, stop the clock! I got a, I got a bracket in the way. Nah, it's the exhaust bracket from years ago. I'm actually gonna pause the clock because that wasn't accounted for. Jeez, it's already been three minutes. All right, start the clock again. All right, we're back. Cut that off so we can continue on. I will get help this time. It's a bit of a tricky one to hold this one. Yeah, well, plenty of time. Drink back. Oh, oh yep. Yeah. 
All right, check that out. We actually smashed it 29 minutes and 31 seconds. How good is that? What part's meant to be what? on the car? What? Nah, don't worry about that. That's why I want it. Yeah, a bit more work than I thought. These, these machines here are just so good. Oh, come up a bit. Ah. Oh my God. I love the sound. I could just shoot these in all day. Woo. Oops, I think I broke it. Wow. There we go, tray side on. All right, we're getting very close now. It's almost beer o'clock. Actually, it's way past beer o'clock. Everyone's left. But we're just getting on to the finishing touches now. A few fiddly bits. We had to muck around with fuel lines and that. Obviously, being a bit of a prototype, this one for the patrol, it takes a little bit longer to sort those things out. Um, I've got to fix some exhaust mounts. The whole idea is to have these kind of peek through, so I might get the exhaust extended a bit so they just come peeking through that hole a bit nicer. But for now, it's pretty damn close. I'm happy with the result. So we'll get these few things buttoned up and then, yeah, I could give you a quick look around the tray. Might do that back at the workshop. Um, we just got to finish a few things off here and it's getting dark outside and it's piss and rain. So we'll get this thing back home and then I'll run you through all the different features on it. <laughs> all right, guys, just before we head to the workshop, Justin, I've just caught him right at the end there, but dude, I've got a shout out, massive, massive shout out to the Peacor team. They've pulled this together. It's been absolutely amazing. Dude. Like you say, it's the first patrol one, isn't it? Yeah, big couple, of, massive couple of weeks and the team engineers, the boys in Peak or everybody that you work with today, even all the boys right throughout the factory. Yeah. They were oh, so pumped see, when they heard yeah. that we were building a tray for you yeah. and building a tray for a patrol, which I said I'd never do. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But we've done it. Um, yeah, man, the team here, I've yeah. nothing to do with this one, so I'm not taking the credit for it. Seeing the way the thing comes together, going through the factory, I gave you guys that sneak peek. It just blows your mind, the stuff they do here and how it can pull together. And it's just, it was easy to go together as well. Like I'm used to just drilling holes in that, but the thing was like a big Meccano set. It was it's a technology, incredible. man, right from yeah. the design, if, if, like, even in the workshop, and I say it to everyone, you won't see a drill press or a drop, uh, drop saw in our workshop. Yeah. Everything's designed in CAD, everything's millimetre perfect. We use the best equipment to manufacture everything. And most importantly, all made right here in Australia. So keep it Australian, mate. Yep. Yeah, definitely. All right, we'll get this thing back to the shed. I'll give you guys a quick run through of all the features and details. And then you'll see this thing on this car for years to come. I'll tell you what, it's never coming off of it, but it saved a, a sh of weight, I'll tell you that. It's so much lighter than my old tray. Mm. That's the biggest thing. So go out and enjoy it, basically. Enjoy it, mate. Appreciate it, mate. Yeah, no, yeah, well awesome. Done. I'm happy to be the first patrol in the country to run the peak or tray, that's for sure. He's been peak or. Yeah, <laughs> I've been peak <laughs> Hello guys and welcome to Built Not Bought HQ. Make sure to click on the far left to subscribe to the channel. Click down below to see the latest episode if you missed it. And don't forget our merchandise on our website. See you in the next episode.